Welcome to this week's Gibbs Cam video. Here I have a part here. Your customer sent you this part. It says, um, can you make this? And you're going, sure, it doesn't look that tough. I'll just cut this out of some uh, four inch material. That'll give me my angle. Then all I need to do is put it on the fourth and cut out these pockets. Pretty easy to do. Well, the problem is, here's my fixture. I turn on my dimensions you can see that's a radius of 23 inches from the center and you're thinking well I'll uh, just do this and wrap it so if I turn on my geometry I'll just uh, do standard polar and cylindrical and wrap my geometry around there and uh, go for it and uh, since this has a y-axis offset I will just bring in my fourth axis, which everybody has. If you have solids, everybody has this fourth axis capability now. So if you have this, then you're thinking, okay, that toolpath looks really good. I can cut that pretty easily. Well, let's go to our machine. And right off the bat, you can see uh, there's some major issues with that. Not only is the Z not having enough travel, if I was to run this, of course you're getting all these over travel alarms. It's hitting the casting of the machine. Plus you're way out from the fourth, 23 inches, so you'd have to build a pretty big fixture. And your machine isn't gonna have enough travel unless you have a really tall Z and a really long Y axis so you can avoid all that. So your dilemma is, uh, what do I do next? So the solution is I'm still going to do this on my fourth axis vertical. But now I have a fixture that's a little more reasonable. This is the center rotation of the fourth axis. And let me bring out the actual part. This is the actual finished part, what it needs to look like. And I don't want to use a ball end mill because these are sharp corners down here. They take forever with a ball end mill. Then I have to steel deal with the corners with the uh, sharp 90 degree edges along here. So the solution is we're going to, here's my tools. We're going to use fifth axis module in four axis mode. So what I did first is I healed up these pockets in here. Uh, made it a little easier to program rather than having it jumping over, jump over these here and back and forth. So it's real easy just to heal up these uh, surfaces here, just going into the solid modeling and then click on this button up here that says, turn that off, but unstitch the solid. So you can just select here, tangent faces and click do it and that'll heal up these uh, pockets there. So what you end up with, put this away. What you end up with is, sorry, this surface right here. So I want to just cut this first, then we'll come in and cut the pockets. So my first tool path, of course, I'm just going to use a half inch end mill. And we'll go through that. Now you can see we're using the five axis module and we'll go through how we program this part. So the first thing I'm going to do, don't worry about the feeds and speeds, you can set whatever feeds and speed you like. We're starting at the XY plane and the part station is a rotary. This is what the, this is the three axis vertical with a fourth axis table on it. So just on the options, just general, then we go to surface paths and calculation based on surfaces, parallel to the surface. And then I click in on single edge. So this is the edge right here. So very easy to select. You just select one edge Go down to select tangent faces because everything's tangent because we have radiuses in all four corners there. And then you have your um, single edge there. Now the next thing is drive surfaces. What do you actually want to cut? So I just click on this bottom surface here and click OK. Easy to do. Uh, I have full start and end at exact edges. You can play with that and uh, margins. I have additional margins, quarter inch, that's, that's half the diameter of the tool to uh, keep away from the, uh, the walls. 
exactly one half of the diameter of the tool. And I just have corner cleanup on. And I'm going to do climb milling lanes, cut tolerance, and my step over is eighth of an inch. We won't go through everything on here as you can kind of see uh, what I have selected there. As far as the tool axis control, I have fourth axis because this is not a five axis machine. So I have a fourth axis and then click on the rotary axis and say the direction is X axis for the fourth. So the X is going in the X, X axis direction. And just have B tilted relative to the cutting direction here. You can see you have a lot of choices there. And the lead angle to cutting direction, I have zero there because this really isn't a five axis. So you you really can't tilt the tool the other direction. And then tilt angle of side, I have zero. As you can see, this is pointing to the surface here. So that's what we want. We want to cut normal to this surface here. As far as gouge check goes, I always uh, have this on and click flute and shaft. Normally I don't click holder front or back, but that's totally up to you. You will get a different tool path if you don't have this selected. So be careful, you're wondering maybe why it has such a weird tool path. Make sure you always have these checked on. And then drive surfaces, this is automatically look at, looking at the drive surfaces. But one thing I want to do is I want to avoid some of these walls. So I'm going to click on this button here that says check surfaces and the three dots there. And here you want to make sure you have face selection on and then you select the faces that you basically want it to stay away and not gouge into. So I just select the top here and the sides as well as the chamfers. Next is link. Now link has to do with how the tool is entering the part and exiting the part as well as gaps along the cut, links between slice, things like that. So I'm going to use lead in and if you click these three dots here you can use the default lead in but uh, I didn't like the path the lead in for that I want it to arc in longer than the default so I just clicked on uh, lead in uncheck that click on automatic arc fixed an arc radius of one inch minimum arc radius three quarters of an inch and I have a don't use lead out because when it gets done I'm just it's just gonna go up in uh, Z and the rest of these I just have follow surfaces. Now as far as roughing goes, I don't have anything checked there. And utility, uh, nothing set there. So this is my first tool path there. Then let's go to the second tool path here. I want to, I left material on the uh, last operation and this one is just a swarf milling. We're just gonna clean up the wall that the previous tool left. So swarf milling wall surfaces. I have it selected there. You can see the wall surfaces. Now I just have a minus 10 thou in there just so you can see it cut this wall. Normally you just have zero in there to, to swarf right against the wall, but I just have this in there so you can see it. Then of course the bottom rail, you're gonna select this bottom edge along here just by turning on face selection or you can extract the geometry either way you want to do it. I have zigzag on, your cut tolerance, no axial shift. I'm not going to force it uh, up or down any. And link again. I'm just using, don't use lead in, don't use lead out. You could do uh, lead in, lead out. Maybe we'll change that and see how it looks. Uh, but right now it's just basically going down, starting to do the cut. But while we're at it, let's do a lead in, lead out. As you can see, we're just plunging down here. So let's do a nice little lead in, lead out. So use lead in, use lead out. Check these. We'll just use the default lead in and the default lead out. And just redo that. Now you can see we have a nice lead in, lead out on that wall. So that'll reduce our... Uh, lines where they match tangently and that's all for that one there so the next thing we want to do go to operation number three is we want to start cutting out the pockets here so let me get rid of this other part and bring back this one here the actual finished part so here we have almost the same thing here 
surface paths. I'm doing swarf machining inside here. And uh, swarf surfaces, you can see selected in there again, just like we did before, just uh, select tangent edges there. You can put in your uh, tolerance there. Tool axis again, fourth axis, rotating around the X axis. Tilt angle, rotate ortho to rotation axis. And I have my minimum steps there, which is pretty much default there anyway. Let's do the gouge check, guide curves, swarf surfaces, holder back. So all these pretty much I left default on here. Link, I'm using lead in, lead out. And on the gaps along the cut, slice layer regions, I have follow surfaces on all those. Multi-cuts, I have a number of slices, one. And constant cut, I have it going in 100 thou each time. Number of layers, seven. Layer distance, 100 thou. I know these get a little uh, daunting on how many things to choose, but a lot of these things you can leave default. I don't have anything on corners. That was just default. And utility, nothing really on there either. So that's to cut out the pocket. And, of course, the... Next operation is to do the same thing on the other pocket. And now we have to cut the chamfers here. So uh, we're using tool number two, which is the half inch countersink tool. And again, we're just doing swarf milling. So it's going to use the edge of that angle of that tool. And swarf milling wall surfaces. And see, I selected the wall. And the bottom rail, of course, this bottom of this edge right here. And uh, pretty much all the default is there. Again, fourth axis. Make sure you're on the X axis. And then the link. I'm using lead in, lead out. And here I just have direct because it looks like it went clear around here with no issues. So... I really don't have any gaps or links between slices. It's just doing one cut there. So you can always play with this. If you see gaps in there where it goes up in Z, then back down, you can uh, change that by clicking follow surface, bend spline. Most of what I use is direct and follow surfaces. And you can always use lead in, lead out on those as well. So that's the chamfer one. That's the chamfer on the bottom cavity. And again, on the other cavity on this side. So let's take a look now on how you would machine it in uh, Machine Sim. So we go to our Machine Sim and here it is right here. We'll slow this down just a little bit. And you can see we have enough travel on here to uh, get to every every feature we need to on here. So let's render. So we kind of have an arc in there. It's not just plunging. So we have an arc and a radius. Well, an arc and a line. So we'll kind of speed this up, then you can go to the next uh, operation. So then continue on with operation two, which is the finish pass on here. Nice arc in. And it is moving the y-axis. If you go to this flow here, you can see it is moving the y-axis off to compensate for the tool and the wall. Then here we're doing the same thing. We're kind of arcing in with a line, a ramp, roughing out the pockets.
doing the chamfer now, outside chamfer first, inside chamfer next, the other pocket, and we're all done with our part. So somewhat easy to do if you have a dilemma like this where you don't have enough uh, travel on the z-axis and the part you're doing is very large, too big to fit in your machine. This is the way to do it using the five axis. That is an add-on to the regular uh, solid surfacer uh, is the five axis. Let me just show you what it looks like here. This is the five axis module right here. So the five axis module has some really nice tool pass. It'll do a uh, tool pass in three axis, four axis, or five axis using solids or wire frame. Um, either way you want to do it, but that's the solution for doing this kind of a part. And thank you for watching.